Hello, and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. We have a wonderful family member guest today, but before I bring her on, I want to remind all of you in ATP land, please take out your cell phone if you haven't already done it, and text the simple message TRUTH in the message box and send it to the number 88202. When you push send, you'll automatically be subscribed to our text message alert system. It's always free. You'll get all of our content like today's show in the palm of your hand every time we release something and you'll never pay for it. Okay, hopefully you did it. Let me bring on Annie Cyrus. Uh, Annie Cyrus, as all of you know, is uh, the national expert on what happens to a woman in Islam. She's an escapee from the Islamic Republic of Iran. She has a story that is like no other. She has founded Live Up to Freedom. She happens to be the editor of everything we do here, and she's been with us since the very beginning. Welcome back, Annie. My pleasure. Thanks for having me back, Barry. Let's start with what's going on in the political news vis-a-vis -vis Islam in the United States. Um, Hamtron, if I say that right, in Michigan, has a six-member city council they were just elected. Every single one of the members in this Michigan small town is a Muslim, and the mayor is as well. They are now taking office in January. It's believed to be the first all-Muslim administration in the United States. And this town and its officials now say, even though they're of the Islamic faith, all of the members have vowed their religion will not impinge upon their duties as councilmen. So here's the question that no one but you and I seem to be asking, which is, if all six of these council people and the mayor are really practicing Muslims, doesn't their religion, Islam, require them to follow Islam over the laws of the land when there's a contradiction? And if they choose Islam over Michigan law or United States law, what happens next? Well, let me start here, Barry. You said they have all vowed that their religion will not affect their job, right? If that's the case, why is it so important for them to repeatedly say, we are Muslim? Why is it so important to wear their religion on their sleeves? Why is it so important to say the first all Muslim council in America? That right there tells me that them being Muslim have everything to do with what they're planning to do. Personal opinion, or just a question. <laughs> as far as me believing they're not practicing Muslims, as I said, they are. If they weren't, they wouldn't wear it on their sleep. Now, because they're practicing Muslims, because they're very proud of being Muslim, they will follow what is ordered. And the order is you follow the law of the land until it goes against words of Allah or Sharia. And we have discussed this many times in past few years, me and you, Barry, that Sharia goes completely against our constitution, which means our constitution goes against Sharia. So they will be put in positions where they have to choose. And if they claim to be Muslims, then they have to choose Sharia. Therefore, let's say if a woman is involved with an argument and the man is involved with it, they're gonna to have to take the man's word over the woman because while well, under Sharia, a woman's word is counted as a half of a person. All right, well, let's make the news even bigger and more horrible, shall we? Based on your answer, the election of Muslim candidates across the United States has just broken the all time record. And here's some examples. Um, Tania Anderson is a Muslim lady elected to the Boston City Council in Massachusetts. Atel Haxiao is elected to Worcester City Council in Massachusetts. Abdul Hamoud is now the mayor of Dearborn, Michigan. Amir Ghalib is the mayor of Hamtrak, Michigan, as we just talked about. Azrael Awal is elected to the Duluth City Council. Shamir Hader is elected to the New Jersey State Legislature. Uh, Umar Muhammad is on the Galloway City Council. Shania Hanif is the New York City Council member. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on and on. Now, I assume all of these elected officials, as is normal and customary in United States politics, will take an oath 
usually on the Bible, although I imagine these people will swear on the Quran, Annie, to uphold the local law, the state law, and the national constitution. How can they honestly do that in light of what you just told us, that if they are acting contrary to the laws of Islam, they have to switch from the laws of the land to Islam. Now, isn't it true that when there's a contradiction between the laws of the land and either the words of the prophet or Sharia, they must choose Islam. What happens then if they make that choice? Well, I can give you a very simple answer, which is, well, you just named 11 people. So imagine 11 more Ilhan Omers and Rashida Tlaib. Boom, you have the answer. But I'm going to expand a little bit just to make sure no one who's watching this video would go under impression in any shape or form that we have any problem with Muslims. We don't. The conflict here is the fact that, for example, when Keith Allison was taking office, when Ilhan Omar was doing it, when Rashida Tlaib was doing it, when Hossein Obama was doing it, they all said the same thing. They did. But when it came to it, Hossein Obama opened the White House door and let Muslim Brotherhood in. When it came to it, Ilhan Omar forced Congress to lift a 108 years old ban to let her in with her religious wearing hijab. When it came to it, Keith Allison got away with beating his girlfriend because under Sharia that's allowed. You see where I'm going, right, Barry? Oh, absolutely, Annie. But here, here's the more complex question. If you remember, we talked about this several years ago. Thomas Jefferson was so concerned about the conflict philosophically and religiously between the book of the Muhammad, Muhammadians, as he called Islam, and the laws of the new land. And he said, unless they walk away from that book, they can't be Americans because he saw the conflict in the 18th century. What's going to happen when they're asked to choose? How will they choose? Oh, they choose Sharia. They will choose Islam. Remember, I say this with such confidence, not because I'm an Islamophobe. No, I say this because I decided to choose American freedom over Islam. And guess what? I got bounties on my head. They want me dead for it. So there is no other choice if they choose to follow the constitution and respect our freedom and liberties here, they will put their own head out there possibly being chopped off for doing what they did. So by knowingly or unknowingly, they will end up choosing Sharia and Islam. And again, the, if this was like, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, this would have been a guesstimate. But as I brought up examples, they have proven to come in. And when they are sworn in, they do use the Quran. They come in and they end up being the practicing Muslim. Now, they will just get more powerful going back to Quran 4735, where it says, do not call for peace when you are superior in numbers. Last year in 2020, we had 89 Muslims elected to office. This year in November, we had 11. Comes 2022, CARE is encouraging more than 200 candidates to run. It's just a matter of time until they are superior in number, then the blasphemy law comes in, then the First Amendment will be revoked, the Second Amendment, and before you know it, as I called it in 2015, we will be saying welcome to Islamic Republic of America. I know it's dramatically hard for more Amer most Americans to wrap their head around it, but I come from it. Islamic Republic of Iran was Iran by itself known as the mini America in Middle East. Now for the last 43 years, it's Islamic Republic of Iran. Very recently, Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, right? So that's where it's gonna go. That's what's gonna happen unless we all do something about it. I'm sorry to be brutally bringing bad news, but it is the reality. Annie, I, I can't argue with your logic. Skipping over across the pond to Liverpool, England, 
a taxi driver is the hero of Great Britain. Uh, after he witnessed a jihadi in the backseat of his taxi, get this, assembling a bomb, he slammed on the brakes, jumped out, locked the door, and the bomb detonated. It killed the terrorist. Uh, Britain is now on nationwide high alert, expecting uh, another attack. So here's the part I don't get. The British borders are virtually wide open. Immigration from uh, the Middle East, mostly Afghanistan and Somalia, is unchecked. Nobody's being vetted. There are no background checks. These people are flowing in by the tens of thousands. Um, after what happened, and Great Britain has intelligence that more attacks are coming, why don't they close their borders? Because if they do, then there will be no more terror attacks. I'm sorry, bad joke, probably. Let me just add something real quick for our audience who have now followed the news on the Liverpool bombing, taxi bombing. Um, this happened in front of a woman's hospital in front of the entrance of the, uh, I believe it's called labor um, ward. So where all the pregnant women are at. This jihadi, this Muslim jihadi was about to take out mothers and their babies. For anyone who thinks they are so peaceful, that is the extent of inhuman act he was about to commit. As to why they're not closing the border. Genuinely, honestly, I know this sounds like a ridiculous joke, but because they don't want to be Islamophobes, because they don't want to provoke Muslims, they will look the other way. They will run to cameras and announce this had nothing to do with Islam, knowing it had very well everything to do with Islam because the guy was whispering Allah Akbar as he was installing, putting together that bomb. But they will do everything in their power to not be Islamophobes and not provoke Muslims, especially under the circumstances of ISIS being back in power. They are too afraid. They are cowards. They don't want to face the reality and fight back. You might be right. And it's very sad because there will be more attacks according to British intelligence. Annie, tell our viewers where they can get in touch with you and follow your work. Liveuptofreedom.com is my website, liveuptofreedom.com. Also, I come and um, have a good chat with Berenice Baum about every other week on americantruthproject.org. So those are the two places you can find me. Well said. I urge all of you to follow her. She's a brilliant and courageous young lady. Please remind yourself, if you haven't done it, to sign up for our message alert system by simply messaging the word truth to the number 88202. Push send, you'll be signed up and you'll get all of our stuff like the wonderful Annie Cyrus absolutely for free. Thanks for coming on to watch us today. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.